Let's talk about autism friendly jobs. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I wanted to talk about some things to look for when you or your loved one are looking for jobs that can more so fit your needs as an autistic person and therefore be more sustainable. Hopefully as well, more fulfilling. Now I wanna share with you guys a statistic. At least 85% of autistic adults with a college education are unemployed. And this is according to the 2023 statistics from the US Department of Labor. Let me repeat to you guys, I am not great at numbers, but 85% of the whole US population, right? 85% of autistic adults that have college education are unemployed. So this isn't even a matter of your intellect, you know? That is a high number, 85%. I just want to read off a little bit more from this article before I get into what I have to talk about because I think along with learning about ourselves, it's also important to learn about the systematic ways that we are influenced and the ways that society influences us. A 2020 study of the performance of autistic job seekers by the UK's University of Bath and University College London found that autistic applicants are less likely to engage in impression management, which is the conscious or subconscious process in which someone will attempt to influence how people perceive them using strategies such as persuasion and self-promotion. This causes autistic applicants to often rate poorly in confidence, communication skills, and likability. I also want you guys to note that just because it says that an autistic person struggles with this doesn't mean that it's impossible, right? There are a lot of autistic people out there who are high masking and high camouflaging who can, to, an, to a degree, succeed at impression management, but to the detriment of their own mental health and physical health. I want to keep that in mind as well. Not only are the conversational contents of interviews more stressful for people on the autism spectrum, but the nonverbal aspects can put them at a disadvantage. 43% of hiring managers view things like poor body language, including a lack of eye contact, not smiling or fidgeting, all things adults on the autism spectrum may present as an instant deal breaker, according to a report from a Career Insights platform. Unlike their neurotypical coworkers who can often maintain productivity in office settings while navigating conversations and distractions, employees on the spectrum often need a quieter space to work, or they may even need headphones while they're working. Neurodivergent talent also often needs more clear and concise written instructions rather than open-ended instructions that are confusing or misleading. It's so funny as I read this article because I feel like instructions should be clear, right, all the time, regardless of neurodivergency, but I guess that's not common or like reasonable to ask for. I don't know. I think it's reasonable, but society is weird. Of course, None of these misunderstood nuances mean that autistic workers aren't capable of producing meaningful work and value. In fact, the Harvard Business Review released a study that found that people on the spectrum are 20% more productive than their neurotypical peers if they're given the right environment and right opportunities. So that's something really interesting that we will touch on in my advice. So remember that. These are things to keep in mind and have in perspective when we are thinking about what we want to do about our struggles when it comes to working and what type of work we want to go into. I want you guys to practice your discernment all the time with any of the videos I talk about. I don't want you to take my advice so literally that you go out there and you just follow the steps I have to give and expect that it should work for you. It should be a jumping off point for you to build off of, whether that's taking the advice I have to give and tweaking it to fit your needs in a more personalized way, or even just having it be a conversational point between you and your partner or you and your caretaker or you and the family member as to what you want to do about it, what you think about it, things like that. Maybe you could ask them for some advice and input, but either way, this is just 
giving you some sort of format for you to begin this conversation and give you little bits of guidelines to follow. Of course, my advice isn't going to work for everyone. And in that sense, feel free to take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Feel free to take certain things and tweak it to fit your needs better. You have full permission to do that. And now that we got that quick disclaimer out of the way, let's get straight into the video and the advice. I'm gonna have to shut that window. So when it comes to autism friendly jobs, I want you guys to think about four things. And I listed the most important thing at the top. Of course, this will vary person to person. It is people, special interest, purpose, and sensory sensitivities. Now, depending on who you are, I feel like people in special interests will fluctuate between which one's more important. And a good way to gauge which one would be more of a priority for you is to think about who you are naturally as a person. Are you more of a physical and mental person? So I guess more objective, or are you more of an emotional and spiritual person? So more subjective, because if you are working in a job that constantly forces you to work against your natural self, then you're for certain going to reach a burnout because of that job. So what does that mean, your natural self? If you are someone that naturally operates in a more spiritual and emotional sense, you wanna find jobs that allows you to tap into that part of yourself rather than ignore it, right? So you wanna make sure that the people within your job is allowing you to tap into that rather than ignoring it. So for example, if you are an emotional and spiritual person and you are in a job that has a lot of people that you don't really get along with and you find yourself needing to numb yourself a lot around and you begin to find yourself needing to rely more on your intellectualization or the physical aspect of your job, then you will begin to feel more and more detached and unfulfilled and have a lower bandwidth of dealing with sensory sensitivities because you're losing that sense of spirit. And likewise, if you are a more physical and mental person and you are working in a job where you are completely disinterested in what you are doing and you are not mentally stimulated, it doesn't matter if you have the best coworkers or the best customers, you will feel unfulfilled all the time. And that in and of itself will whittle away at your spirit as well. Spirit is a big part of work that I feel like is just not something an autistic person can sacrifice when it comes to work because I feel like society is already set up to make it so much harder for an autistic person to operate. You need to have a sense of spirit when it comes to work in order to have it be somewhat sustainable for you. And so whatever it means for you, whether it's working in a field that lets you tap into your special interests or working in a job that allows you to tap into connecting with people that you love to connect to. Make sure you understand who your natural self is, what your needs are in that sense, how you naturally operate, and know how to prioritize those things when it comes to thinking about what type of jobs you want to work at. So going back to that list of four important things, right? Let's start with people. I feel like a really big misconception with autistic people is that we are antisocial. We don't crave to connect with other people. We don't care to connect with other people. We keep to ourselves. We are introverted. In reality, autistic people, just like anyone else, craves social interaction, human connection, and authentic connections with other people. A big reason why a lot of autistic adults struggle with maintaining jobs, struggle with mental health issues is because our social needs are not truly met a lot of the times because of all of these barriers in society. A lot of us are deeply lonely, deeply unfulfilled because we are not able to find a job that can fulfill us. We are not able to find a way to connect to people that can fulfill us. And that really starts to wear on your spirit and your soul over time, right? And when your spirit starts to go down and society is already not really set up for you, it makes it hard 
harder and harder to function. And so when I say to prioritize people, what this means is think about the people that you are going to be interacting with whenever you are at work. People like your boss, your coworkers, your customers. Are these people that you can stand to be around? Are these people that you want to be around? Are these people that you are happy to be around and look forward to be around? A good way to start to understand what type of people you want to be around at a job and what type of job in general has people that you want to be around. I think a great way to dissect this is to think about the people that you naturally get along with. A lot of the times it's a specific personality type or people who are just interested in the same type of things that you are. Think about the places that these people go to. Also think about places that you yourself would want to go to. So for example, I feel like I get along really well with people who are very creative and very open because a lot of the times, even if we are very different, creative people will be open to authentically connecting with you because even though you are not within their norm, they will still be interested in connecting with you and learning about you and vice versa. And that's something to consider is are you going to get along with your coworkers as much as anyone else that you're going to be interacting with? Because if you think about it in an objective way, you are going to see these people very often. And if you naturally do not understand or get along with or take interest in or care to connect with these people on a day to day basis or a weekly basis, and you have to consistently force yourself to interact with them or force yourself to try to think of ways to mask around them, script around them. If you have to constantly think about this, all of that energy that should be used to do your work objectively is now being used up in all of these subjective interactions, right? And so now what happens is you are empty you're completely empty when it comes to having energy left to finish and do your work. So what ends up happening is you draw the energy from your reserves. The reserves are usually something that you would draw upon in emergency situations, but for a lot of neurodivergent and autistic people, drawing on those reserves is a very common experience. And that's why we reach these ultimate burnouts. When I think back to the years and years of work experience that I had before I started my own business, it was such a cyclical experience. And it makes so much sense after my diagnosis that it was so regimented how every two years I would enter a new job and I would enter this job so high masking, use up all this energy and all of my reserves to pass as high functioning when in reality it was so unsustainable to ultimately reach a burnout that lasted about three months where I couldn't do anything. All I could do was just lay in bed, eat, sleep, shower, repeat for three months straight. I could not look for another job. I could not see friends. I could not socialize. I could not process. I was emotionally numb. I was disassociated from my body for three months straight until I ultimately came out of that burnout to look for the next job. It would always happen that same way. Two years of work, three months of burnout, two years of work, three months of burnout. And depending on how debilitating that job was, the burnout would last longer. And this is such a common experience for other autistic adults out there, whether you're diagnosed officially or not, is these cycles of repeated pushing yourself past your limits, working an unsustainable job, and then reaching these ultimate burnouts that could be so debilitating and could last for so long, right? Until you ultimately pick yourself back up, maybe barely, to work another job that's unsustainable. More than anyone else, you cannot slack on prioritizing the people that you're going to be surrounded by and interacting with. But if you think about it, if you're surrounded by people that you can ideally look forward to interacting with, seeing at work, talking to, and maybe even socializing with outside of work, 
if you're going to also be seeing and interacting with customers that you would naturally get along with and can have conversation with, it makes interpreting and socializing easier outside of the objective work so that you have actual energy to give into the objective work. Now, another thing to look for is a job that surrounds your special interest and something that you're very passionate about, or at least something that you're very skilled at, right? A lot of the times they kind of go hand in hand. Something that you're very interested in is also something that you're very skillful at. That is a superpower of neurodivergency and autism, I feel like. This one is also really important. I feel like when you find a job that surrounds your skill sets, surrounds your special interests, it already kind of makes the environment a lot more conducive to you. This also goes hand in hand with people because it also makes it easier to interact with someone when you are interacting around a specific topic or skill set that you are genuinely interested in and you are genuinely good at. So if you are a person that loves computers and video games and you work at a video game store or computer store, you will never really get tired of talking about something you have to talk about with customers because it is something you're super knowledgeable about and something you genuinely like to talk about. And so socialization at that point and interaction at that point doesn't have to feel like a burden necessarily because you actually have that fuel to talk about that specific topic and you don't necessarily have to use fuel to mask. You see how these all tie into each other? And the same goes for Let's say if you work at an arts and crafts store, if you are a creative person and you work in a store where a lot of other creative people are coming in to buy products and you are talking to them about their next project or you're talking about a specific product to do a certain type of art with, you never really truly get tired of those types of conversations. And if anything, it actually gives you a vessel to connect with other people and tap into something that feels almost spiritual to you in a sense, even though it could be very objective, right? Now, the third thing on this list is also important, but won't always get tapped into. If it does, you have the trifecta and that is purpose. If you're able to tap into a sense of purpose, which means being able to help people in some sort of capacity with something that you're passionate about, with the people that you can actually care for, I feel like we don't really talk about purpose enough when it comes to jobs. We tend to think about jobs in a very objective way. A lot of neurotypical people kind of talk about jobs as just this thing that you go to to make money and Everything you need from life outside of money is able to be fulfilled outside of your job in your personal life. This is really difficult for autistic people because your job is a necessity, right? It's where you make money. It's where you earn your living. So in a sense, that is more important than your personal life. You cannot really have a personal life without a work life. Work life takes precedence, at least in our society. And so for a lot of neurotypical people, they could just go to their work, numb themselves or whatever, make it through, still get their jobs done. And then it's almost like they come home and party. It's, it's fun for them. It's where they let loose. It's where they get their needs met. It's where they have their fulfilling, flourishing life, right? But for a lot of autistic people, that's impossible because they're using all of their energy reserves, everything they have. We're using it at our work life to get by. And so when we go home, we have nothing left within us to do anything. And so if your job is not surrounded by people you want to connect with, is not allowing you to do something that you're even interested in or passionate about, then you have no energy to tap into those outside of your job either, and you end up feeling empty in your personal life and in your work life. Again, this is not going to be for every autistic person, right? But if you are someone that has autism and you find yourself not having a job that you're happy with or fulfilled in, and you're also having your personal life flounder as well, you might feel this deep sense of 
depression, this deep sense of emptiness, because what's ultimately happening is you're not able to tap into a sense of purpose in life. You're not fulfilling it at your job. You're not getting it in your personal life. So why am I here? What am I doing, right? We ask ourselves this. And every human being needs that sense of purpose. That's why when I say working at a job that can fulfill your needs is important, I really, really mean it. And I hope that I could bring some sort of hope in a sense with all this. Like, yes, in many ways, jobs and and work is such a big cloud that looms over all of our heads and is so difficult. But if we put that effort into trying to find the perfect environment that we could fit into, if you think about it, it could start to meet so many of our needs in such a fulfilling way that can make everything flow so much smoother than an average neurotypical person. And this kind of ties into that quote that I read from that article in the beginning of this video where a lot of neurodivergent autistic people can end up being a lot more productive than a neurotypical person. And I feel like usually when that happens is when a neurodivergent autistic person finds the intersection of people, purpose, and passion. They find a job that they care about they are surrounded by people that they get along with and they could help people in a way that they could feel good about. And of course, the last thing on this list is sensory sensitivities. This one is always something to keep in mind because even if a job may have people that you would get along with or a job that you may be passionate about, if it's constantly whittling away at your sensory sensitivities, it of course makes the job a lot less sustainable to work at. You could also keep in mind whether or not this job can accommodate those sensory sensitivities. So if they can accommodate those sensory sensitivities, that's great. But if they can't, then you may have to give that job up because it's not sustainable for you and it's not healthy for you. So an example of this is I may be completely interested in animals and I may get along with other animal lovers, right? But I may not be a good fit for working at a dog grooming service or an animal shelter or at an animal farm because the sensory sensitivities I have surrounding smell and textures, just things like that makes it really hard for me to deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. So even though that environment is something I would love to subject myself to this, those sensory sensitivities on a day-to-day -day basis within that job. It makes it a lot harder for me to be in that environment and be able to show up at my fullest capacity. I want you guys to leave in the comments down below if you are someone with autism and you are someone who found a job that fits one or maybe even multiple attributes of that list that I gave you guys, please leave that in the comment section down below. What do you do? and tell us how does it feel to be an autistic person that can have a job that you are genuinely passionate about and maybe even as well allows you to tap into your sense of purpose when it comes to helping others. I feel like it's really important to have a space within our community that talks about the positive aspects of being autistic, not just the hardships of autism. I think it's important to have hope. I think it's important to encourage others. It's important to allow others to understand that there are autistic people out there that yes, are struggling, but also in many different ways we are thriving. It also gives people an example as to what they can look to if they're feeling a little bit lost with what job they wanna work or go into. For me personally, I have always found being in the world of art very enriching for myself in many different ways. And I've experimented with different types of jobs surrounding art. Some didn't really fit, some weren't really fulfilling, but I feel like I ultimately ended up in a creative field that at this moment works best with my needs and therefore is extremely sustainable for me. I'm able to tap into something I'm extremely passionate about when I talk about these types of things. I feel like at this point, I would have already been reaching a burnout around this time, but because I'm able to tap into these three things, I am nowhere near a burnout. I genuinely love what I do and I look forward to doing my work. If that could provide any sort of hope for you guys or any sort of inspiration, I hope that it does. Thank you guys again for watching today's video and I will see you on the next one. Take care of yourselves.
Bye.